Okay, so you join me here on the 5th of November here in the UK and today is the first day of the official registration for this new drone and model aircraft registration, <laughs> registration scheme uh, set by the Civil Aviation Authority. So in this video we're going to talk very briefly about what this scheme is, um, how you register, how much it costs and then we will go through doing the, the test so we can get our operator and flight ID so that we can be legal here in the UK. Okay, so this has been coming for a while now and there's lots of um, people frustrated in this country about um, this scheme. I'm not going to kind of get involved in uh, the politics on that. I think the only thing I will say is I do agree with people's frustration in terms of this isn't really going to solve anything. People that are stupid with drones and other model aircraft that fly into restricted airspace and stuff, this isn't going to stop this. Those people probably aren't going to register. It's not going to do anything. Um, but I'm happy to register um, just because I think nine pounds isn't that much for the registration and we'll see if things change or how honest uh, the system will be but it may also help um, get your aircraft back because you'll have to have your operator ID uh, on your craft so uh, I've only ever had a craft come down due to battery expiration once and, and obviously I found it because it wasn't very far away um, but it might help with that kind of thing. So this um, this whole thing is specific to uh, an un any unmanned uh, aircraft, so not just uh, drones or quadcopters, so fixed wings, flying wings, whatever that be, basically unmanned model aircraft is what it relates to, and anything over 250 grams and up to 20 kilograms because then there's a different different thing for that so if you have um you know a little quadcopter you fly in your house or whatever you don't have to worry about this this is only related to stuff over 250 grams so perhaps you've got a racing quad and it's under that then that's fine it's important to know that for the electric um, aircraft that includes the battery weight so you can't have something that's 249 grams and you put the battery on it has to include the battery because uh, that's considered to be the fuel tank. Uh, but if you have um, a nitro helicopter or something, it is without fuel. So just a couple of the key things um, to keep in mind there. So most most drones and stuff, unless you've just got that new um, DJI Mavic Mini or whatever it is, which is just underneath um, this category, uh, then you'll probably be okay. So when we go through this process, Basically, you register, and if you're, uh, uh, there's basically two kind of registrations that happen. One is like you're just an owner; uh, you don't have to pay any registration fee for that. There's no ongoing fee. Uh, it's if you're flying that you have to pay uh, the nine pound registration fee. The test is multiple choice. Uh, it should be fairly straightforward if you kind of know what you're doing uh, and aren't a complete idiot, really and you have to do that test every three years but you have to pay this nine pounds um every year it's a 20 uh, question multiple choice and you have to get 16 out of 20 to pass so it all seems quite straightforward to me so um we'll share some stuff on screen and see what it looks like one thing i did forget to mention is there is a, a currently a small waiver so some um, model clubs and organizations have got a waiver so you don't have to register and don't have to do the test um, so I have my insurance with fpv.org um, I think it's called I can't remember off the top head uh, I'll put a little thing below um, and they will basically if you give permission pass on the information to the Civil, Ac Civil Aviation Authority I think by the end of January or something next year. That's something that, that's what they basically agreed, and they will also collect the nine pound registration fee from you in January, in addition to 
the insurance fees and stuff you pay. So I didn't need to do this, but I thought I'd, I was kind of curious as to what is involved and, and what needs to be done. So for the sake of nine pounds, I thought I'd have a look at it and uh, share that with you. Okay, so I decided to come over to the cave to do this bit of video so it's a bit uh, quieter and I can concentrate. So let's uh, share the screen and we can get started. So first thing we need to do, obviously go to the drone safe, uh, drone uk website and we can uh, click the link for the CAA uh, flying drones and model aircraft overview. So as mentioned already, these new um, restrictions are based on the weight, so 250 grams to 20 grams, and we're going to need to register to get either a flyer and operator ID, or just an operator ID, depending what um, you need. And the good thing about this website is everything you need is basically on this site. So we won't kind of read through uh, every single page. You can do that for yourself, but we will just go through the drone and model aircraft code, just so you can kind of get a quick overview and kind of realize that all the answers to any of the questions are probably going to be in this because this is what it's basically expecting you to do. So we've got uh, flying safety and responsibility. So this is about obviously making sure your drone is up to date. You're only flying within line of sight. Um, so you're not using FPV. Well, you can use FPV as long as someone's um, watching you and all this sort of stuff, where you can fly, how high you can fly, permissions that you need. Uh, and all this sort of stuff. So most of these things, if you've been flying uh, some form of aircraft already, these things kind of you should know already. But if you're new to this, then this is just a real handy guide so you can get up to speed. I suggest probably saving or printing this or, or something if you want to kind of keep it handy. And then you may also want to reference this if you get stuck uh, doing uh, the registration test as well. So when we go through it, um, I'm relatively confident that I'll get more than 16 right, but um, if not, you can always go back and reference this yeah, if you want to. A bit more information about um, you know, knowing the capabilities of the thing it is that you're flying, so you know, not trying to fly further than the battery or the, the fuel you have uh, can take it, however it's going to affect your craft and all this sort of stuff, and making sure obviously you're not drunk or on drugs or something when you're trying to fly because obviously you're in control of an aircraft and you need to do that safely. Uh, one of the big concerns uh, around the use of drones and other model aircraft is privacy of other people. So there's also a bit here about respecting people's privacy and things that you should or shouldn't know or should do in terms of recording and taking photos and permissions and stuff um, that you might need. So that's pretty much everything. Um, that you need to know. So you have to be 13 or older to be able to fly and you need a, a parent or guardian with you when you do this test, uh, but someone else needs to be the owner um, of the aircraft. But uh, yeah, that's it. Everything you need is on here and you have to renew your operator ID um, every 12 months and the flyer ID I think is valid for, for three years. So that's it. So let's crack on and uh, take this test. So what do we need? What to... We're going to do the flyer ID and the operator ID is what we want. So let's register and take the test. Okay. This is stuff we've read already. Yep. Okay, there's the costs there. So if you both fly and are responsible for the aircraft and you need to pay the nine pound. If you just fly over people's, it's either a person that's responsible and we've had to pay the nine pound. Um so you're actually you're not doing this you're not paying to fly, you're paying to own a drone. So put your email address in and you get a unique ID and then we can go ahead and select that we want to fly and operate and then we can take this theory test. So as I mentioned before, it should take about 20 minutes, 20 questions, 16 of which you have to get right. So which of the following points should you check to make sure you can legally fly at the location? Uh, so yeah, out of these questions, make sure there's no bylaws. 
so there's some scenarios. Mean wants to fly a drone or a flower show. 150 people. Right. I'm not sure about that one, but which of the following statements are people to see using? It's true. Okay, so. Okay, uh, flying in the countryside, there are lots of people around. You're flying at a safe height, suddenly notice an air ambulance flying in the upper direction. What should you do? Fly your drone away from the air. Fly towards the air ambulance. Attention, no. Attempt to gain attention, no. So we want to fly away and get safe. Which of the following must you check so you can fly safely and have enough fuel or battery to last for your planned flight? Your camera's working. You have a spare controller. Um, so battery and fuel. Uh, Matt, Tim and Rory, an organisation event of people over 2,000. So certain things do apply for people over 1,000. I remember that much. Um, so Rory walks along the public footpath. Da, da, da. Matt makes sure he's flying 50 metres away. He flies crowd. And Tim walks along a public footpath in a neighbouring field. So let's see, he at least 50 away. He avoids flying over festivals and flies at... 14 meters. Uh, I try to remember what the the rule is over a thousand. Let's uh, let's try that one and see how we get on. Why should you keep your drone software up to date so the manufacturer can identify you, so air traffic control can see you know, so that the drone performs in the way it intended. You're out flying a drone in a well, uh, area in a well, blah blah blah, glaring with the sun. So they fly it back, reassess, land immediately. You can, you know where you are, so just not a problem. Right, so we want to steadily fly our drone back towards us. Okay, so three friends are talking, taking their drones, and more aircraft to fly in an empty field outside the fence. Uh, Robin says we can fly as long as we get 520 meters. We can fly in this field because we're outside the airport boundary. We must check that the field is outport. Right, so we must check that it's outside of the flight restriction zone before we fly. When do you need permission from an airport to fly when you wish to fly in a restricted zone? Is the answer there always when flying? Yeah, definitely when you wish to fly in a flight restricted zone is the answer for that one. So we're halfway through. Uh, never fly higher than. 400 meters, 150 meters, 400 feet. Yep, 400 feet. Okay. Why well, must you have insurance for flying? Okay. You only need insurance if you're doing paid work. So, yep. If you need to record, yep. When you're paying. Okie dokie. Uh, Nick is out flying a drone when it starts to snow. What do you need to consider to be safe? Other people can still see the drone. It doesn't matter if other people can see it or not, it's your responsibility. Uh, okay, so yeah, I think the only thing here that could happen is your hands might get a bit numb, so you can't control very well, so that's what it would be. Three friends have hiked up a hill that's 50 metres high. They're standing at the top of the hill and decided how high they can fly. Steve says we can fly up to 70. We can fly. Right, it's up to 120 metres or 400 feet above where you're at, so it's all good. Um, which of these main reasons are not flying above 4,000 feet? Most aircraft, uh, yeah, most normal aircraft fly above 400 feet, so... Frankie decides that she wants to start using her drone to film weddings for payment, which does she do? Get permission from a local like council, get permission to save less authority. Right. Matt flies his drone behind a group of tall trees. His drone is out of sight. No, he needs to see it all the time. Three friends are talking about how they watch their drones when they're flying. Ruth says she's using camera, so she's flying FPV. Christina says she doesn't use a screen and watches her drone because it's the best way of everything. Yep, pretty sure that's the answer. But Kelchi says he always binoculars. No, that's it. Andrea realises she's accidentally recorded some footage for a neighbour's window. The dirty girl. What can she do? She can delete it. Uh, yep. Yeah. So I think she, yeah, as long as she deletes the bit with the privacy bit, she'll be fine. And then, how can you check if there's any restrictions? Yeah, various drone apps give us what we need. So cool, we got 19 out of 20, and it was that number six I wasn't sure about with the 2,000 people. Um, yeah, okay, it's good they give you a bit of feedback.
Okay, put my name in here. And uh, let's see what we do next. Okay, date of birth. So we'll just blur that out for you, but put the date of birth in there. This is to make sure you guess you're over 13 or whatever, it, whatever those requirements were. Then put our address in. All that's done, and now just happy that I'm confirming my flyer and operator responsibilities. Okay, all that stuff looks right. I need to pay my nine pounds, so let me just do that. Okay, that's done. So just. Let's continue with uh, the registrations. That's it. I now have my flyer ID and my operator ID. So the flyer ID is valid for three years and my operator ID for one year. So now I need to kind of print some stickers off and stick that on my drone. So that's it. This is, uh, that's pretty easy. Um, I know lots of people aren't happy with the requirement to do this, but you know, I don't think it's too bad. It, really, I feel like you know, should you have to pay, should you not have to pay it? I don't know, but nine pounds is not the end of the world for a year. Uh, and at least I like the fact that that uh, test was basically common sense. So it's not requiring you to go and spend a thousand pounds to continue to enjoy um, your hobby. Obviously you should still join a club and stuff like this if you're kind of new and getting into any of these um, hobbies. But yeah, hope that helped. Um, that was it, the UK drone registration and test process. Thanks for watching this video. A thumbs up would be really appreciated. If you're interested in other geek type videos, please consider subscribing to Spectrum Geeks. Why not also follow us on Facebook, Instagram and Twitter. And before you leave, why don't you check out one of these other videos that may be of interest. Thanks again for watching.